Hey, Shanine, how you doing this evening? Amen. Hey, Sister Linda. How you doing, Sister Beverly? How y'all doing this evening? Amen. 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 Good to see you all on this blessed evening. Amen. Hey, Sister Crystal. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Sister Kara. How you doing? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Amen. 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 It's good to be alive. I pray that you all had a wonderful day. Hey, Sister Chantel, how you doing? Sister Pam, how you doing? Amen. I pray you all had a wonderful day on today. And I pray that God uh, has kept you throughout this wonderful day as well. Um, the mere fact that you can hear me says that he brought you through this day. Amen. Amen. How you doing, Sister Clara? Sister Emma? Amen. 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 I'm going to bless you on tonight. Amen. With the help of the Holy Spirit on tonight. I uh, just want to bless you through song. Amen. And I pray that it blesses you in some way. Amen. Shape, form, or fashion um, to give you some kind of encouragement uh, on tonight. Amen. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today, because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Bible. 
uh, your pen, your paper, uh, so that you can uh, follow along. Um, you should have an extra Bible on the side uh, so that you can follow along, or if you have a tablet or extra device uh, on the side uh, so that you can follow along uh, in the scriptures uh, as we do what we do. Um, but I want to share something with you while it's on my mind. Uh, you show me someone with a, a clean, neat Bible with the pages just all in place, you know, everything all nice and, you know, everything is just in order in that Bible, a nice, clean Bible. And I'll show you somebody with a dirty life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Some of you caught it and some of you didn't. So that Bible ought to be worn out. Amen. You should It should be worn out from you flipping pages. It should be worn out from you studying. It should be worn out uh, from, you know, from you using it. Amen. Amen. That Bible app should have been in crash by now because you use it so much. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, so it's my prayer that uh, you're ready to receive the word uh, on this evening uh, as, as the Lord uh, would have me to share it uh, on tonight. One scripture I'm going to share, but I'm going to deal with a series of scriptures uh, that's linked to this particular scripture. So for the sake of time, I'm not going to read all of the scriptures from the start. I'm just going to only read one scripture, but that one scripture embodies uh, everything, everything uh, that we're going to speak on on tonight. Uh, so uh, turn your uh, Bibles or your apps uh, to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're going to take a look at uh, verse number 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verse uh, number 12. 1 Corinthians 12, verse number, verse number 12. Amen. Look at the Word of God. Look what it says. It says, For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, right? But all the members of that one body, right? Being many or one body. So also is, is Christ. Amen. Uh, the grass withered, the flower thereof faded away, but the word of our God shall stand forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray on tonight. Dear God and Heavenly Father, I just want to say thank you, Lord. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you, Lord, for these, your people. I thank you, Lord, for, Lord, using me on tonight. And I just pray right now that each and every individual who tunes in, Lord, that they receive what it is that you have for them. It is my prayer, Lord, they hear none of me, Father God, that they hear all of you, Father God, and that, dear God, everything that you allow me to speak Lord, be as if you are speaking to your people yourself. I'm but a mere vessel, Lord. And I realize that every word that leaves my lips, dear God, it applies to me too. And so I just pray, Lord, that you would allow all of us to be blessed by the word. And Lord, that you would just allow us to not just, Lord, hear the word, but Lord, that we be doers of the word as well. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We lift you up. And Lord, we magnify your holy name. It's in the mighty, blessed, and wonderful name of Jesus the Christ. Our Lord, our Savior, we do pray. Amen. Amen and amen again. Amen. Truly God is good. Amen. He is awesome and he is good. Amen. On tonight, uh, we're going to uh, share from the subject, we are, we are one. Um, and, you know, it kind of goes along with what we've been dealing with uh, as it relates to our gifts. But now, tonight, I just want us to kind of take a look at that whole idea of oneness and understanding how uh, the gifts should work together and just drive home the point um, that we are, we are one. We are, we are one. Amen. And I pray tonight's lesson uh, blesses you uh, in some way. Um, to start off the lesson, I just want to go over uh, a few uh, of the gifts or some of the gifts um, that I have seen operate. Amen. Uh, I'm not knocking any gift. I'm not taking out any gift. Uh, but we do understand uh, that there are some gifts that are debatable and all this stuff. I am not denying that those gifts exist. Amen. Uh, but I share with people, when you say you are gifted in a certain area, you've got to make sure that you're in line with Scripture and you are right with God when you say you have that particular gift. So tonight, uh, I'm going to share some of those gifts uh, that I've seen operate, uh, some of those gifts that are in this time and this day uh, that are operating, uh, and I just want you uh, individually, I want you individually uh, to take a look at these gifts, amen, praise the Lord, 
and see uh, where you fit and uh, maybe begin to see uh, what God has gifted uh, you to do. I'll also mention uh, some of the others uh, that some uh, theologians say are uh, dispensational uh, gifts, dispensational gifts, uh, meaning gifts that were given at a certain time. Uh, to establish the church and now uh, are, are not necessarily operating right now. Now, I'm not going to try to debate that. I'm not here for that. I'm not trying to, to make one person uh, 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 right or wrong. But at the same time, I am saying that all of the gifts that are listed in the Word of God, they exist, right? Uh, the whole debate is whether they're operating in this day and time, but we're not getting into that. But at the same time, I tell anybody, when you say you have a certain gift, amen, you've got to make sure you're in line with Scripture and that God himself, amen, has ordained what it is that you are doing. So you leave all that debating and arguing for yourself. Uh, that's not what I'm here for. I just want to share, amen, what thus said, uh, what thus said the Lord. Amen. Uh, on tonight, uh, this first gift is the gift of teaching. And we uh, share uh, this gift of teaching uh, basically is an attribute given by God's spirit to the members of the body to communicate biblical truths, right? So that is what? The gift the gift of teaching, right? So uh, there are members in the body of Christ who have been gifted to teach, amen? Teach the word of God. Take the word of God, break it down so people can actually, what? Understand it, right? Um, another gift is the gift of wisdom, to be able to take the word and what? Apply the word. Um, you ever have indiv individuals who maybe you would go to to see maybe for advice and different things, right? You you might consider that person having a lot of what wisdom because they're able to apply biblical truths to your everyday life. Okay. Um, another gift is the gift of the gift of knowledge, right? Uh, to be able to take deep th uh, deep concepts. Right and break them down, right, uh, and understand them uh, in a way to where the average man cannot understand it. Right, that is the gift of the gift of knowledge. Now remember that all these uh, gifts are listed in the Word of God. There's also the gift of faith. Uh, that that gift where an individual is so confident uh, that God has said something, right, and nobody, not even the devil in hell. Can what can block them, stop them from believing that God what is going to come through uh, and and follow through with what He has said. And if you want an example, Abraham uh, is a good example, the father of faith. All right, just going over these so that you can begin to find out where it is where you fit. So I'm kind of going back to some of the ones that I mentioned in previous lessons. All right, here we go. That's the gift of prophecy. Now remember, I shared with you. Uh, that if you would take a look at the preacher, right, um, uh, if you take a look at it, the preacher, in many cases, he doesn't necessarily for, uh, foretell or tell uh, maybe what will happen uh, in the future, but he may take the word of God, right, and give, uh, 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 give a word of warning, right? So that is that prophecy is a what? A speaking, a speaking gift. Right. So when you take a look at that whole prophecy, it's either foretell or foretell. Right. So you've got to understand that when you take a look at the preacher, he kind of falls in line with that where he's able to tell you things. Right. And then you're like, wow, you know, you said that. But you got to understand it's from him understanding the word of God and understanding what God has said. And then when you apply to your life and things happen and, and go, happen in your life, it goes along with what he's saying because the Holy Spirit has spoken to him to share with you that particular word. And that's why some people will say, Pastor, you must know what's going on with me. Pastor, you must know what's happening in my house. No, you've got to understand that God may give him a word to speak to you and speak to you at that moment so that you will be blessed uh, 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 blessed at that moment and at that time uh, in your life. And then we have the prophets of old to where they told of things, what, in the future, right, that were going to happen. And I said, you got to be careful with that whole gift of prophecy because many people call themselves, what, prophets. But I mean, how many of you know that when you take a look at Corona, when you take a look at all the things that have happened in 2020, you know, some people that call themselves prophets seems as though they missed it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, but we're going to move on. Um, the ne another gift is the gift of discernment, and I shared with you before. That's that gift to be able to take someone, uh, what, what someone is saying, 
or, or to be able to determine someone is truthfully speaking or someone is being what? Deceptive, right? And mostly what? With the word of God. See, that gift of discernment, uh, that gift won't allow an individual uh, to be lied to or, or faked out or deceived, right? Because why? God has given them that gift to be able to determine truth from error, right? What's real and what is uh, deceptive, all right? Here we go. Uh, the next one is the gift of the gift of helps, right? And basically, the gifts of help is an attribute given by God's Spirit to the members of the body of Christ, right? To help other members be more effective, right? And that's individuals. They don't have to be in the front, but they help ministry flow, right? They may not be in the front, but they are vital and they are very what? They are very important. All right. There's the gift of what? Administration. These are those individuals. Uh, they can take resources. They can structure. They can plan. Um, they know how to go from point A to point B, put things together and organize things. Right. That is that gift. What? Of, of administration. Right. There's also uh, the gift of service. Uh, this is the individual. They always want to help. Always want to help. Always want to help. Always want to help. Where you need me? Where you need me? Always what? Always want to help. That's that gift of what? Of service. There to support the ministry, what, in any way they can in order for the ministry to keep going. Right? Okay? Alright? Um, and let's take a look at it. I, I think I did, went over this one already. It was the gift of teaching. Alright? The gift of exhortation. Right? The gift of exhortation. When you take a look at the gift of exhortation, many people call this one uh, uh, the gift of encouragement. Right? The gift of encouragement. Able to maybe pick you up when you're down. Somebody who's able to come there and tell you the truth at that moment, but still give you strength uh, in what they're saying to keep on going, what, just a little further. But in truth and in love, right? So that gift of encouragement is that gift, that kind of like that gift you can kind of, that person you can lean on, right, to give you that extra push uh, to keep on going, what, a little further. And even be able to uh, tell you things that you need to do to move forward and encourage you and push you uh, to move forward in whatever area you need to move in. All right, that's the gift of giving. Some people all uh, uh, have the gift of giving, right? They just are givers, right? They give. They give sometimes give for no reason. Right? And they just believe in their mind. You reap what you sow. And you hear people say, I'll get it back. I'll get it back. I'm not worried about it. I'll get it back. Right? Because why? They have that that that, that supernatural uh, gift uh, of giving. Everybody doesn't have that gift. Right? It is a gift. Now, everybody ought to give, but everybody don't have that gift. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, also, we have the gift of leadership. Right? That is someone who's able uh, to get people uh, together, get a group of people together, and lead them, right, and lead them into doing something and accomplishing a particular goal, a supernatural gift uh, given by the Holy Spirit uh, of God, right? There's also the gift of mercy, right, the gift of mercy. And uh, I shared with you before, many times the people with the gift of mercy, right, sometimes get taken advantage of because they're so forgiving, they're so loving, right? But at the same time, mercy is needed. Why? Because you can't be too far in one way. You need somebody who has that gift of mercy to be able to come along, right, and give that, that comfort and that, that, that peace at that moment. Right when in those times, and you'll notice that people that may have the gift of mercy, uh, they they function better w during maybe catastrophes or or maybe when when bad things happen or when people are going through things. Right, that's when this gift what it it pops in. That's that gift. That's that gift of mercy, and it is a supernatural gift given by what by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. Right, once an individual places their heart and their faith. In our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus the Christ. So I, I, it is my prayer. Uh, if you say, Pastor, you went too fast. Well, all right, just go back and replay it so that you can see yourself in one of these gifts. Now, here's the thing. That's the gift of tongues, right? Interpretation of tongues, right? Remember I said, tongues is in the word, right? I do believe that it is a gift from the Holy Spirit. But you've got to understand that it is a gift when you take a look at scripture, when you see it in operation, the apostles were able to, uh, to, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ in a language that they weren't familiar with, right? So you've got to understand that when it was in operation, the apostles were able to speak in another language, right? And, and, and you've got to understand, if you have to give the tongues, it should be what? In 
interpret it. It should be, and somebody should be able to understand with that gift of interpretation what you are saying. And you should be able to know what you're saying uh, as well. It's the gift of miracles, right? The Bible talks about that. Uh, 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 the gift of healing. There's all those gifts as well. And you've got to understand, those gifts do uh, 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 show up in the Word of God. But you've got to understand that, you know, in these times that we're in, you've got to understand that those gifts should, what? They should pop in, right? And so we've got to understand that when we take a look at these gifts, the reason why they're debated is because uh, many believe that they were they were put in place so that people at the time, the church at, at its birth, that, that mankind would understand that the apostles were authentic, that Jesus Christ was who he was, right? But now, right, that has been established, so now uh, we, we have those other gifts. So we've got to understand uh, that that shouldn't be up for argument, because why? Because the Spirit is real, and God always, always uh, reveals uh, what is true. So um, let's move forward uh, in this particular lesson, and I want to get to what I want to get to on tonight, and I pray it blesses you. I'm going to start off with verse number 12 on tonight. We're going to start off with verse number 12 on tonight, and I pray that uh, you're ready for what God uh, has for us on this evening. Amen. Uh, on tonight, all right, let's take a look at verse 12, right? Verse 12. Look what it says. For even as the body is one, yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ, okay? Pastor, what do you want me to get from this? You've got to understand this one thing. It amazes, uh, amazes me how divided the body of Christ seems to be, right? Uh, uh, many people have said it before. I think it was Dr. Martin Luther King. He said that Sunday morning is one of the most segregated days of the week. Amen. Praise the Lord. And how many of you know when you take a look at the body of Christ, the body of Christ represents unity, right? It represents togetherness. And it amazes me how it seems as though at times the body of Christ seems so, what, so divided. Here we, why, Pastor? There's a church, amen, on every corner. Amen, praise the Lord. You have this denomination. You have that denomination. This denomination feel there's right. This denomination thinks they're right. But you've got to understand this one thing. We all, all of us, me included, all of us, every preacher, every member of every church, everybody who calls themselves a Christian, we have to stand before God for any kind of division that we may cause, what, in the body of Christ. You've got to understand, there's no division in the body of Christ. So I'm going to tell you something. God's going to deal with us with this Baptist, Catholic, and all this other stuff, right? All these different uh, religions, denominations. Let me tell you something. God's going to deal with us with all of this stuff because what? What it does, it divides us. And see, what we've got to understand, that we've got to stand on the word. We've got to stand on truth. We've got to stand on what the word of God said. It can't be what I think. It can't be what somebody said. It can't be uh, something that somebody else told me. It's got to be something that I've been what co convicted of, right, in my spirit from what? From the word of God. God's going to deal with us, right? God is going to deal with us. It says, guess what? It says the body is one, right? So also is Christ. I'm here to tell you when, when Christ comes back, right, for his church, there's going to be a lot of surprises. When Christ comes back for his church, y'all, he's going to deal with us because, why? Wow, there's too much division in the body of Christ. And I believe it with my whole heart that God allowed this coronavirus to get our minds right. This is our chance to get it right, to get up off all these, these divisions, to get up off all this stuff that divides us, to get up off all this stuff that we're trying to hold on to, that he doesn't deem important. Christ says, do my word, right? Keep my command. He said, you love me, keep my commandments. And you've got to understand that, guess what? Christ is not going, he's not going to negotiate and all this other stuff. Christ will say, what did it say in my word? Then that's what I wanted you to do, 
right? So, so we've got to understand that 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 the body, the body represents what unity, unity, right? Here we go. So here's the thing you've got to understand. This is the point I want you to get. Christ is not divided. So why are we, right? Christ is not divided. So why are we, right? Let me tell you something. I'm gonna share this with you. Some of you may. Say, oh, well, pastor, I don't believe all that. Oh, well, pastor, you done lost me and all this other stuff. Let me tell you something. I'm not a Baptist because my mama was Baptist. I'm not Baptist because my daddy was Baptist. I'm not Baptist because some somebody told me to be a Baptist. Only reason why I'm, I, I, I say or affiliate with the Baptist church is because the beliefs that they have is what I hold fast to as well, right? But it don't make me no better, right? I'm a Christian before I'm a Baptist. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm a Christian before I'm a Baptist because you've got to understand that I have got to make sure that, guess what, that my faith, my trust, my hope is in Jesus the Christ. He's got to be at the forefront. Anybody I put on his level, right, if I put myself on his level, I done messed up. So you got to understand, I'm a Christian before I'm a Baptist, but I'm here to tell you, I ain't trying to tell you, oh, we going, we got to be nine denomination. Oh, no, that's not what I'm saying. All I'm saying is, is that Christ is not divided, right? He's not divided. So something's wrong. <laughs> Something is wrong somewhere, right? Something is wrong somewhere, and God is going to deal with us because of that. All right, here we go. So Christ is not divided. So why? Why are we? Here we go. Look at verse verse 13. It says this. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free. We are all made to drink of one, of one, one one spirit, right? So the spirit is wise. So we've got to understand this one thing. If the spirit is wise, then let me tell you something. If you are operating in the spirit, if I'm operating in the spirit, if the next person is operating in the spirit, let me tell you what's going to happen. What's going to happen is, is that everything we go, we're doing will complement each other. Why? Because the spirit allows us to be what? allows us to be one. We were baptized into one into one body, right? And you got to understand that whole baptism, right? Now we have the physical baptism, let's talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and all these different things, but you got to understand what baptism represents is this. Re baptism represents that a change has taken place. Forgiveness has taken place. New life right, has been attained, right, when you look at that whole baptism, right, it's representative of Christ going to the grave, right, but what happened three days later, he rose in victory, what, over sin and death, so when you think of that whole baptism, uh, don't just think about water, think about new life in Christ, right, think about forgiveness from your sins, think about a new walk, a new talk, because you've been baptized in the spirit, in the spirit of God. Now look what I want you to see. It says whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. See, you had those, right, who considered themselves Jews, right, because uh, uh, that's God's what? Chosen people. So when you take a look at the Old Testament, that's the children of Israel. They're considered Jews. That's God's chosen people. They're called Jews. But you got to understand, when he came to the New Testament, Christ came, and some of them actually, what, rejected, what, Christ. So anybody who is not what Jewish, right, is considered Greek, right? So a Gentile, right? So whether you were considered God's chosen people from the beginning or if you are non-Jewish, it says this. It says we're made to drink of one spirit because the Apostle Paul presented what? He present, pre presented the gospel not only to the Jews, but he also presented it to those who are not what? Not Jewish, right? But look what it says. It says whether slaves or free. All right, Pastor, hold up. Slow down. Slow your roll. Help me to understand this. This is what I want you to understand. When you take a look at salvation, when you take a look at your walk with God, when you take a look at having a new life in Christ, 
when you take a look at giving your life to Christ, you've got to understand this one thing. God is not concerned with what's in your bank account. He is not concerned with where you live. He's not concerned with what you drive. And he's not concerned with how many degrees that you have. No. God says this. Whether Jew or Greek or slave or free. Lord have mercy. See, your social economic status or nationality is not to be considered. I want to share something with somebody on tonight. And y'all better listen. Y'all better listen on tonight. Listen well. You've missed it if you think the world's success and status matters to God. You got some people, they live their whole life trying to make a name for themselves. Their whole life trying to accomplish things. Their whole life trying to be this. Their whole life trying to be that. Their whole life trying to be big shot. But can I help you? When it comes to the kingdom of God, guess what? He ain't looking at your address. He's not looking at your what? Your bank account. He ain't looking at what you got on. No, you got to understand when God looks at the body, you got to understand, guess what? We are one and there's no one, no more what? Important than the other. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Here we go. All right. So let's take a look at this next segment of scripture. Let's look at verses. Uh, we're going to take a look at verses 14. All right. Verses 14. Uh, and let's go down to verse number 16, right? 14 through 16. Look what it says. For the body is not one member, but many. Watch this, right? This blessed my life. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not a part of the body, <laughs> it is not <laughs> for this reason any less a part of the body. If the ear says, because I am not an eye, <laughs> I am not a part of the body, it is not for this reason any the less a part of the body. Lord have mercy. See, you got to understand, you got to understand this one thing. See, what happens is, in the body of Christ, what happens is, we begin to look at each other. We begin to look at what one is doing, what, what another one is doing, right? But you got to understand this one thing. I can't say, oh, well, I don't, I don't have, I don't have the, uh, I don't have the gift of teaching, right? Right? I got, I got the gift of wisdom, but, uh, you know what? That don't matter. That's not what? That's not important, right? The scripture is saying that it is dangerous for you to downplay the gift that you have. The gift that you have is vital and it is important, right? Just because you don't have the gift that somebody else has, don't you sit there and act as if you can just sit down. God going to let you sit there like a knot on the log and give you a pass. Don't you worry about what other folks say about you. Don't you worry about what other folks going to allow you to do. Guess what you better understand. What is God going to hold me or you accountable to do? And you got to do that what? All to his glory, right? So you got to understand that gift doesn't just function in the four walls of the church. Lord have mercy. No, that gift operates in the body to bless the body Bless the body of Christ, okay? So, Pastor, what do you want me to do with this text? This is what I want you to do, right? I need you to understand that you need to contribute when and where, right? When and where you're supposed to, right? And also, you've got to understand that selfishness has no place, what, in the kingdom of God, just because you feel you don't have a certain gift, you can just sit down and not do something. Amen. God don't have people that's just sitting on the bench not doing anything. Let me tell you something. The, sometimes the people that are sitting down, right, that's not in the game are just as important as the folk in the game. Because can I help you? If you don't do nothing but cheer on the people that are up front, that are doing what they're doing, can I help you? That's what you ought to do, right? Oh, I ain't no cheerleader. Yes, you are. We all cheerleaders for Jesus Christ. If somebody's doing something, if somebody's working 
working in ministry, if somebody's trying to accomplish something, yes, you ought to encourage them. Yes, you ought to do, do what you can to help them. Yes, you ought to do all you can, what, to help them and what, and not hurt them. How many of you heard grandmama say, if you can't help nobody, don't hurt nobody. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's the same in the body of Christ. Right? We ought to be there to help one another. And just because we're not operating at that moment, or just because we don't have a certain gift, we can't sit back, right, and look at other people and try to pick them up apart and try to say this. No! You've got to understand, selfishness has no place. We're on the same team. And I want to share this with somebody. When you talk about your brother and sister in Christ, when you talk about somebody doing ministry, when you talk about a saint of God that's doing God, uh, doing good, can I help you? You are being counterproductive, and God going to hold you accountable for it. Amen. Praise the Lord. You ain't got to say amen. I know I'm right. Amen. Selfishness has no place in the kingdom, in the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Here we go. Let's take a look at this next uh, segment of scripture. Uh, we're going to take a look now uh, at verses at verses 17 uh, through verse number 20. All right. 17 uh, through 20. 17 through 20. Look what it says. Look what it says. It says, if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? <laughs> if the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? Right? But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. If they are all were all one member, where would the body oh Lord have mercy? This is good. Where would the body be? But now there are many members, Lord have mercy, but one, but but one, but one body. See, you've got to understand this one thing that each one of our gifts. It's very important. Let me tell you, I'm glad that my eyes do what they're supposed to do. I'm glad that my mouth does what it's supposed to do. I'm glad my heart does what it's supposed to do. I'm glad my lungs are doing what they're supposed to do. I'm glad, right, that my stomach is doing what it's supposed to do. Because let me tell you what ends up happening. When they all are functioning and doing what they're supposed to do, they were all designed to what? To help one another. So guess what happens? Everybody is blessed. Everybody is benefited. Why? Because we're not separate. Amen. Just because we live in different addresses doesn't mean we're not together. See, you can be in a different location but still walk in unity. You can be in a different place and still be together. They got some folk living in the same house. Lord have mercy. I'm going to go there and say Sleeping in the same bed, but they ain't together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But you've got to understand that just because we have different gifts, we may be in different locations. Can I help you? We can walk. We can walk together. Amen. We can walk. We can walk together. And you've got to understand. You've got to understand this one thing, right? you got to understand this one thing. See, when you don't function, the body is not as effective as it can be. When you don't function, the body is not as effective as it can be, right? And let one of the, the, the body parts in your physical body shut down and your whole body is going to feel what's going on, right? So you got to get that. It's the same thing in the body of Christ. See, let me tell you what happens to us. Let me tell you what happens to us. We get in trouble when we look at other people right, and what they're doing, right, and even we try to do what they are doing, or what we feel they are supposed, what, supposed to be doing, Lord have mercy, we get in trouble, you know why, because we're not, what? we're not doing our part, because we're spending too much time looking at other people, and what happens, because we're not doing our part, because we feel they're not doing their part, right, when in actuality, guess what, you don't know what's going on with that individual, you let them do their part, but you make sure you do their part, I'm going to use this illustration, it reminds me of this, you ever saw somebody riding down the road, amen, praise the Lord, and they just riding down the road, and they might see a wreck on the side of the road, amen, praise the Lord, and they looking at people, oh, they should have done this, oh, why they didn't do that, and why they shouldn't have done it, and they still looking at the wreck, forgetting that they got to 
drive and go where they go. Boom! They, they hit somebody else and they're getting a wreck themselves. I pray I bless you. Don't you get in a wreck in your own life because you're looking at what somebody else and what is doing or what you feel they are what not doing. You got to do your part. Amen. See, the, at the ear going to do what it's supposed to do. The eye going to do what it's supposed to do. The nose is going to do what it's supposed to do. So guess what? When they all do what they're supposed to do, we all what? We all, we all benefit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to I flip it a little bit, right? See, there's a difference between holding people accountable, right, and just being nosy. <laughs> I pray I help somebody, right? There's a difference between holding people accountable and what? Just being nosy. Because what happens is God did call us to what? Hold people accountable, but it's not, it shouldn't be what to tear folk down and to condemn them, right? It should be to be a blessing to them and help them to get where God what wants them to get. And sometimes some folks just know it. They ain't doing their part and what they're supposed to do, but they know what everybody else is supposed to be doing. Can I help you? That is a difference. You know why? Because if I'm doing my part, if, if I'm doing what God has called me to do, can I help you? I don't have a whole lot of time to worry about what you are or are not doing, right? So you got to understand there's a difference between what holding people accountable and just being flat out nosy. Amen. Praise, praise the Lord. If, I, if we was in church, amen, and you were sitting by somebody, you got somebody sitting by you, just nothing, just nothing to say. Mind your business. Amen. Tell them, mind your business. Amen. Praise the Lord. Why? Because when we operate in the body of Christ, we've got to learn to mind our own business. Amen. And handle what it is that we need to do. If you don't do your part, what the body will not function properly. If you don't do your part, the body will not function properly. You've got to get that. You've got to understand that. So if you the eyes, be the eyes. If you the nose, be the nose. If you the mouth, be the, the mouth. If you the heart, be the heart. If you got the gift of teaching, teach. If you got the gift of wisdom, amen. Give wise counsel, right? If you got the gift of administration, amen. You got to be there to help organize things. But you got to understand, God is a God of order, and you can't step in somebody else's lane and expect God to bless what it is that you are doing. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Here we go. Let's take a look at this next segment of scripture, all right? Let's look at verse number 21. Look what it says. It says, and the eyes cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Uh-oh. Woo, Jesus. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Woo, this one right here. We got to get this one right here. <laughs> we got to get this one right here. See, we should never, ever, Get to the point to where we utter the words, huh, I don't need you. <laughs> I don't need you. I don't need you. Right? You've got to understand this one thing. When we operate in the body of Christ, guess what? We all need each other. Right? There's no one. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's no one that is not needed. What? In the body of in the body of Christ, right? So here's the one thing you got to understand, right? You got to get this. You can't survive without the other parts. There's no way. You cannot survive without the other parts. And I'm going to share something with you later to help you understand some things about ministry, about the spirit, about the gifts and all these other things. You cannot survive without the other body parts. Can I help you? The heart needs the lungs. The lungs need the stomach. All this stuff. See, they all what? They all need each other. Right? So you got to understand, every gift in the body is dependent, guess what, on each other. And collectively, we are what? The body of, the body of Christ. Here's what I want you to understand. Unity is vital and crucial for survival. Right? Unity is crucial for survival of the body. Unity, right? Togetherness is vital, right, for survival of the body. 
See, if the body is not working together, if things are not clicking, if things are not operating together as one, you got to understand that everything, amen, will be impacted in some kind of way, right? Unity is crucial, what? In the body of Christ. Because when things are not together, guess what? The whole body will go, will go haywire. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's take a look now. Let's look at now uh, verse 22. Amen. Through, uh, let's take a look at verse through, uh, verse 24. 22 through 24. Amen. Look what it says. On the contrary, it is much truer that the members of the body which seem weaker, watch this, are necessary. And those members of the body which we deem less honorable, on these we bestow more abundant honor, and our less or uh, our less presentable members become much more presentable. Whereas our more presentable members have no need of it, but God has so composed the body, giving more abundant honor to that member which lacks. Amen. Praise the Lord, right? So you got to understand this one thing. People that have gifts that may, may, that might be in the forefront, that might be impressive, that everybody sees, that's visible, that everybody notices, right? you got to understand, God says they get that honor, right? They, they have that. They're always in the forefront. But you see, it's those people that's working what? Behind the scenes. Those people that have the gift of mercy. Those people that have the gift of help. It says that no, they, what, will be more, what, honorable, because can I help you? you got to understand, it's those people with those gifts that seem weaker and less that help, what, that help hold things, hold things together. I'm going to use this illustration because I think that you can relate to it. Anybody had a big mama in their life? Amen, praise the Lord, right? And big mama had all things that was needed to help hold the family together. When there was strife in the family, she what? She got everybody together. When folk was out of line, she helped get them back in line. When somebody was in need, she stepped in, right, and gave them what they need, right? And she didn't want no glory. She didn't want no honor because she knew the Lord was with her and she knew that God was going to take care of her. See, you got to understand, it's those people that help keep things, what? Keep things afloat. Amen. It's those people that help hold things what? Together, right? Those people that have those gifts that, guess what? That may not be in the forefront, but yet they work behind the scenes to help things what? To keep on flowing, to keep on going, and things to keep on going. So you've got to understand this one thing. Pastor may be up front. Pastor may be preaching and teaching. Pastor may be doing this and doing that, but pastor can't do that without support. Pastor can't do that without help. Pastor can't do that without people helping him along the way to do ministry the way he does ministry. So you got to understand that, guess what? We can't put pastor up here and everybody else down here. No. Guess what? God said all of our gifts are important. All of us are vital and important to the body of Christ. So we've got to make sure that we don't get a messed up view and thinking, oh, because I got this gift, I'm big and bad. Or I got this gift, you ain't nothing, right? No. God said the ones who you deem are lesser are really the ones that deserve, <laughs> Lord have mercy, more honor. See, your function may not seem important. Whatever your function is in the body of Christ, it may not seem important, but God acknowledges your worth. <laughs> see, the, see, you got to understand, God acknowledges your worth. So guess what? When nobody else gives you honor, guess what? You better know that God knows what you're doing. God knows your heart, right? And you got to understand that at the end of the day, God looks at the heart, not at the outward appearance. And God says this. God says you may not be much to other folk, but you got to understand. And you guess what? Your gift is just as important as what? As anybody else's. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's take a look uh, at this at this last segment, this last segment of scripture. We're going to take a look at verses, uh, that's 25, amen, 
25 through 27. Amen. I pray it blesses you in some way. Look what it says. Look what it says. It says this. <laughs> it says, so that there may be <laughs> no division. Oh, Jesus. Look what it says. So there may be no division. And some translation, it's called schism, right? Schisms, right? Schisms. You heard some people talk about isms and schisms, right? <laughs> right? No schism. That means what? Division. Your block, my block. Right? Your color, my color. Your street, my street. Amen. Your school, my school. No. No schisms, right? So there be no division or schisms in the body, but that the members may have the same care. Look what it says. The same care for one another. Oh, my goodness. So the members will have the same care for one another. Look what it says. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Uh-oh. If one member is honored, then all the members rejoice with it. <laughs> what that mean, Pastor? That means that, guess what? When one of us, right, does something, is, is operating in our gift, God allows us to do something, right, that's notable, guess what? We ought to celebrate each other, right, and not hate on each other, right? But guess what? When one of us suffers, when one of us is down, when one of us may be going through something, guess what God says? God says we all ought to be there for one, for one another. Look what he says. Now you are Christ's body and individually members of it. Here's what you got to understand, this one thing. The body was designed to take care of itself. You show me a body that is working together and understands that they're dependent. One part is dependent on the other. And I show you a strong body, right? Each body is dependent on each other, right? And the body was designed to take care of itself. When I fall, guess what? Somebody ought to be there to pick me up, right? When I'm up, somebody ought to be able to what? Congratulate me. When I'm going through tough times, somebody ought to be there, what? To encourage me. When I'm confused about the word, somebody should be able to be there and teach me. When I'm trying to figure out my way in life, somebody ought to be able to come and give me some wise counsel. When I'm trying to organize things in my life, I should be able to go to somebody to help me structure and get things straight in my life. We work together. The body was designed to take care of itself, right? And no man can do one thing. God gave us each something of value that we all need from the other one. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to share this. Amen. And I pray it blesses you, right? And I'm about to share something that I need you to get in your spirit, right? I need you to get this in your spirit. And I pray, I pray you hold on to it. And <laughs> it's vitally important that you get it. You got to be the vaccine and not the virus. <laughs> oh, Jesus, have mercy. You got to be the vaccine and not the virus. So many times, so many times, I've seen in the body of Christ where people who call themselves members of the body of Christ they do things to go totally opposite and against the word of God, against the work of God, and against the work of God. And it amazes me how some can call themselves members of the body, but they do everything to fight against the body. I want to share something with you. When you go against the body of Christ, one of your brothers and sisters in Christ, can I help you? You are inflicting pain and wounds on yourself. It is self-inflicting. But I want to share something with you. Some of y'all are ready for this and some of y'all are not. There's some people who give the appearance of being a child of God. And can I help you? They are workers of iniquity. Well, pastor, how do you know that? 
because everything they do goes against what God wants. Amen. You show me somebody who's always talking against what God is doing at the moment. Somebody always talking down on other brothers and sisters in Christ. Someone always trying to tear down their fellow brother and sister in Christ. Somebody trying to work against what God is doing at that moment. I'm going to tell you they are the virus and not the vaccine. And in some cases, those individuals, they are not a part of the body. No, you know what you consider them? They are a cancer to the body. Lord have mercy. So I pray I help somebody on tonight. You wonder why some folk always going against what's going on. Always talking about this one. And always talking about that one. Always working against the church. Can I help you? They are just a cancer to the body. They seem as though they're a part, but they're not a part. If you fall in that category, guess what? I didn't know who you was. Amen. Praise the Lord. I didn't know you were going to tune in. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I pray to God we understand we can't call ourselves children of God. We can't say we are part of the body of Christ. And we don't realize that we were designed to take care of each other. We can't be, what, tearing each other down. God said, no, we got to lift each other up. And God just had to show me, Kyle, that some people, guess what? They call themselves believers. They call themselves Christians. But can I help you? They're not believers because they're always working against <laughs> what is good, what is righteous, and what is of God. Amen. Praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But God says this, we ought to work together. And there's unity. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's unity in the spirit. Right? And unity is very important in the spirit. Right? We are one. We shouldn't be. We shouldn't be going against each other. We shouldn't be fighting against one another. We shouldn't be tearing each other down. And okay, Pastor, what you're saying, we should always just get along, kumbaya. No, that's not what I'm saying. No, that's not what I'm saying. No, because we're going to disagree on some stuff. But you know what? <laughs> when we disagree, guess what? We don't run to everybody else and talk about stuff. No, we go to the person that we got an issue or art with. Amen. So the body can what? Can function what? together. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, pastor, what else you got for me? <laughs> well, <laughs> we are one. Amen. We are one. Right? One. Right? There shouldn't be division in the body of Christ. Right? There shouldn't. We shouldn't be at each other in the body of Christ. Right? Okay? We should be doing what is right. Right now, and, and I know somebody. Oh, what's going on? The same man. No, this apply to everybody that called himself a Christian. Amen. Don't let the devil mess with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't let the devil say, "Oh, he's throwing that this one." Don't let the devil do that to you. No, this applies to everybody in the body of Christ. Because let me tell you something. There's oneness in the spirit. We are one. Right, and this is the gospel truth. Right now, you've got to you've got to agree with me that everything I shared with you on tonight, everything that I shared to you on the night, I showed you in the word of God. Now, here's what I want you to do. If you say, oh, Pastor, I don't know what all that stuff. And you say, well, Pastor, I don't agree with this. Well, I tell you what you do. You make sure you contact me. Right. Because I'm telling you what I showed you in that word. It's in there. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the Holy Spirit will allow you to take it. And what? Apply it to your life, right? And I tell people all the time, say amen or ouch. <laughs> amen, right? Because what? If you know better, then you ought, to, you ought to do better. Amen. Praise the Lord. Love you, saints. Amen. And I just pray to God that you are blessed on tonight. And I pray that the word blessed you in some kind of way. Amen. And I realize that I'm just a vessel that God decided to use. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I pray that I bless you in some kind of way uh, on tonight by way of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, thank you, saints. Love you, saints. 
and, and I pray that God would continue to keep you and, and hold you, amen, in his hands, amen, praise the Lord, if it's your desire to give, amen, on this evening, amen, you can go to the uh, church web, uh, uh, Facebook uh, website for the different ways uh, that you can give, if it's your desire to give, amen, thank God for those who have been giving, amen, and St. Mary, I want to let you know there are some nine members that are giving, so we just thank God. Uh, for individuals uh, sharing with us, amen, what it is that they share uh, with us, amen. I pray that you all have a, a wonderful and, and amazing and amazing evening, and I pray that the word would continue to hold you and keep you, and the word would just come back to you, remember it, so that your lives can be better, amen. I want to share this with you, and I'm going to let you go, amen. It is my heart's desire, right, that any individual who calls himself a believer, to live out to their full potential as a child of God, right? And if a person is not saved, it is my desire that they receive the gospel of Jesus Christ and become saved. That is my heart. That is my desire, right? And it, it, it hurts my heart to see Christians, amen, not live out to their full potential as believers of Jesus Christ, right? And, 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 and kind of be like that man with one talent. Amen. You had one with two. You had one with uh, two talents, right? You had one with uh, uh, five talents, two talents, and one talent, right? In the Bible, right now, we know that that's talking about money, right? It's talking about money, but at the same time, you can relate it to anything that God puts in your hand. The one with five made ten. The one with two made four. The one with one, He buried it. Amen. Praise the Lord. God don't want you to bury what He put in your hands and what He put in you. No, God wants you to have, what? Make dividends. From what it is that he put in you and placed in you. You should have some fruit. People should be blessed by the things that you've done as a believer. Right? The body of Christ should be stronger because what? You're operating. You're operating in your gift. God bless you, saints. I love you. Amen. I'm not out of word, but I am. I am out of time. So I thank God for each one of you. I pray you have a wonderful evening. Amen. And I pray that God will continue to hold you in his hands. Amen. Uh, do what you have to do. I know we're going through some shaky times right now. Amen. Some uncomfortable times right now. We've been asked to do some things that we're not used to. But make sure you just do what you've got to do. Amen. And I'm going to tell all of you. Amen. This is the opportunity. Start eating right. Start exercising. Start putting the right stuff in your body. Amen. Get you some sunshine. Amen. And take care of this temple, what that God has given you. Amen. Keep your body strong. Even with that whatever's out there, you can make sure your body's strong to deal with whatever's going on around you. Amen. So God bless you real good. Uh, love you, saints. And, and I pray that you are, you are blessed on this evening. Remember, <laughs> love you like a Popeye's biscuit. Amen. Good night. <laughs>